Yo, what's up? It's your boy Showtime Doctor. I'm back with the banner review for this week. 829, 2018. So your banner heroes, Mary, Kane, Karen, and Ruby. All good heroes in their own right. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, Netmarble decides to show us the five star versions. I know we summon the five star versions, but like none of us really use the five star versions, so I kinda wish they'd stop that. Unless you're new to the game. But oh well, so I gotta go do the uh, find every individual hero thing. We'll start with Mary. So Mary, when the game first started, Mary was super popular. She used to be the leader on all the teams, and everyone loved her. And now you almost never see her in PvP unless it's a newer team. So we'll start off. Increase dark and water allies attack by twenty percent. Pretty good. Restore her passive, Spirit Harvest. Restore the caster's HP by 10% each time an enemy or an ally dies. That's very similar to uh, Ian, the new wind tank. Also increases the caster's attack by 10% for two turns. Stacks up to five times. I'm assuming that's when someone dies. So if you got like a huge death swarm going, Mary will power up a bit. And she has a self-revive. Revive one time with 30% HP upon death and resets all cooldowns of all skills. That's pretty strong. Unfortunately, the caster is afflicted with the Curse of Spirit Calling. That leads to the caster's death in two turns. So essentially, you kill her, she gets back up. She's got all of the cooldowns back if she manages to stay up for two turns. She's probably going to do her AoE nuke and then her three target. But we'll get to that later. I, I think, I'm not sure if that's dispellable. I don't have my own Mary, the Curse of Spirit, Spirit Calling. But it wouldn't surprise me if it was. So. Or there's some other way you could save her, like a shield or something. So Honor 1, General's Command. This hits two people, 70% uh, attack percentage. 35% chance to cast Curse. That inflicts damage equal to 30% for two turns, 30% of her attack. As you skill it up, the chance to get land curse goes up to 60, and the two person goes up to 112%. Actually, pretty strong for one, because uh, not only is she landing that curse on multiple people, but if she's multi and her countering, she's hitting two people. It can kind of get her in trouble with the counter system sometimes, since everyone has a chance to counter. A curse whisper on her two inflicts damage equal to 110%. Of attack at three targets, 35% chance to decrease their recovery mile by 100, 50% chance to silence the target for two turns if the target is cursed. So she puts up curse with her one. As we said, maximum is 60% chance on two targets. And so decreasing recovery mile, that basically stops healing. Silence makes it so that you can't cast your two and your three. It's on the three turn cooldown. And the coefficients eventually go to 176% damage to three targets and 60% chance to decrease recovery amount. So it's pretty good skill overall. Then her three, Rampage and Evil Desires. Uh, pretty much, it's, uh, hits everybody 120%, 35% chance to make three targets unable to be revived. So it's not like chance per person, it's chance is in general to make three targets unable to be revived, which is actually fairly strong. Uh, you can eventually get it to 60% here in 192. And the unable to be revived will go from one turn to two turns at level 6. Uh, so overall, she's actually a pretty good hero. You can run her on AoE damage teams, curse meta teams. She's part of the has a self-revive and has an unable to be revived. The only issue is it's on a 7 turn cooldown. But normally she'll die before that. Because there's lots of strong light heroes in the game, single target light heroes. So, odds are pretty good. You'll get her back up and you'll be able to double nuke again. And that can go really well if you're running her with an AoE team. So, she's pretty good. She's not like top, top tier, but she's pretty good. I'd like to have one. I wish I did. But unfortunately, I do not. Let's see about finding some of these other heroes. Oh, there's Karen. All right, we'll do Karen first. So Karen's top tier, um, one of the top tier supports in the game right now. Her leadership, increased water and light allies, HP recovery by 20. Uh, there's not so much of a huge use of that right now, even though water and light has good synergy. But maybe later on, down the road in some dungeons, we'll get a similar a dungeon similar to like Tayo's dungeon. Or uh, Dark or something like that, Fire. 
Maybe that'll be more useful then. Now her passive, Abundant Moonshine, grants 10% healing over time to an ally with the lowest HP for two turns at the start of the caster's turn. So some passive healing. Pretty nice for your lowest, uh, lowest HP ally. The caster's turn comes more quickly when an ally's HP drops below 30 once per battle. So that right there, that has actually cost me a couple PvP matches because essentially you'll try to nuke someone down, you'll get them under 30%, but they'll survive. Oh, they'll have that stupid Amon uh, resolve or whatever resolve, right? And then Karen, who wasn't on the turn timer at all, all of a sudden be like, bing, and come up and just ult. And her ult's pretty good too, but we'll get to that later. So that's actually a really good passive right there. The healing over time, you know, that can be pretty good. Uh, on the house, that's her 60 passive. Removes one debuff from an ally at the start of the turn. Debuff, that categorizes most things. The only thing that I haven't seen uh, I get rid of debuff work on is bleed. I'm sure there's some other things. But bleed for sure, I've seen that you can't get rid of, at least not that way. Uh, anyways, as a passive. Revives a dead ally with 30% HP and applies Cozy Abundance for two turns when an ally dies once per battle. Cozy Abundance revives an ally once with 30% HP upon death, but is not activated when an ally dies while burned and does not stack with immortality. Uh, the easy way to say this, if someone dies, she has this thing similar to Deimos where they'll come back up, assuming there's no anti-revive proc. Uh, they'll have this Cozy Abundance buff for two turns. If they die again in those two turns, they'll come back again. 30% health both times, so it's a pretty good, uh, it's good in PvP and it's a good, you know, if there's a character that you're fighting, a boss like Kali or whatever that has a heavy kill, although good luck getting the Kali with that, with this cooldown up, but, you know, they, they, pump, they pump out a bunch of damage and you're waiting on cooldowns, hey, this could be the mitigating factor in keeping, you know, whatever caster or the tank up, so that could be pretty gnarly. Gnarly there. By the way, <laughs> I had someone take issue with me saying gnarly, which was pretty funny, except that, like, they said gnarly four times in one comment, and of course it was someone who hadn't subscribed yet, so, but the funny thing was, they don't know how to spell gnarly. <laughs> so it looked like they were referring to, like, some type of, like, kid's cartoon character. <laughs> it was pretty funny. So if you're watching this video, curious, whatever. Alright, Honor 1. Excuse me. Inflicts damage 100%, restores 5% of ally with lowest health, additional 5% if the cast or if the ally is a water unit. Get that up all the way, it'll go to 10%. So. Could be strong depending on if you're running a water team or not. Honor 2, service with a smile, causes one ally's turn to come more quickly and restore the ally's HP by 30, decreases all skill cooldowns by 1. Now, this, in my opinion, is the best skill she has. It's on a two-turn cooldown, so if you run her with a hero that has cooldown reduction, or they're a cooldown reduction bonus unit in a certain dungeon, this is off cooldown every turn. And the only thing about it is she can't do it to herself, which, honestly, why would you want to do it to yourself unless you really need to heal? But, yeah, so essentially, uh, you're hasting, you're causing the turn to come faster for whoever you put this on. And then you're decreasing their skill cooldowns as well, and it's on a two-turn cooldown. Really good. Good amount of healing. As you get it up, the healing will eventually go to 60%. Pretty crazy. So imagine just doing this every turn. That's what makes her really strong, or even every other turn. Her ultimate's really good too. Removes allies' debuffs and restores their HP by 40%. 60% chance to remove one buff from all enemies. So essentially, usually when this procs in PvP, the one caster, one ally is below 30%, then her, she hastes her turn, and if you happen to have like anti-revive or some other debuff you really want on him, like Bran, Karen's just like, whoops, and it's gone. So, And you might lose buffs at the same time, and does a good amount of healing. So as you skill this up, it's going to go to 85% chance to remove the buff. Remove ally debuffs and restore their HP goes to 60%. It's on a 7 turn cooldown, so this takes a while. So it's hard to rely on Karen for removing debuffs all the time. But that's still there for you. And it's, it's an AoE, by the way, so it's all 5 people. So if all 5 people get really nasty debuffs, he's going to get rid of those. 
But Karen's top tier. Karen's super good. You can even run Karen in opposition dungeons, like wind dungeons, and she's perfectly fine. So, now we'll get the ruby. The rubes. Alright, so ruby's leadership is a really strong leadership, by the way. Uh, increase wind allies attack by 60% if the party has 5 or more wind heroes. I've been taking advantage of that personally in Tayo's dungeon. Run an all wind team in there. So that's pretty strong. If you don't have that, uh, you know, you can clear Kali, lol, you know, eventually, someday. <laughs> and she gets 40% additional wind, wind uh, attack. Leadership doesn't have to be 5 wind heroes. Let's do this. This is her 60 passive, 50% chance to decrease all skill cooldowns by 1. When attacked, restores 20% HP when cooldown is decreased. So pretty much whenever she gets attacked, she has a good chance of healing. So if you get if you get somebody like a Rue or an Ashley and they're hitting her like five times, well, this is proccing. If it goes off, it's proccing every time. So essentially, unless you're hitting her really hard or the anti-heal debuff is up, she's just heal, 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 heal. And she's basically at the same percentage that she was, 20% HP per, uh, per proc. So that procs five times, it's her full life bar. So it gets pretty crazy. Speed kick on her one. Pretty much it's a 100%. Uh, you scale it up, it'll go to 160. And there's a chance to decrease skill 2's cooldown by 1 whenever she uses her 1. Eventually getting to 60%. Pretty strong for a 1. Single target. Her 2 is also single target and inflicts 200% damage. By the way, apparently from what people tell me on Ruby, because I have one but I haven't skilled her up a ton. Uh... Her 2 can eventually hit as hard as her 3. I guess we'll go judge that here in a second. Inflicts damage equal to 200% of attack to one target. 65% chance to decrease skill 3's cooldown by 1. So once again, when she's cooling down skills, she's increasing, or excuse me, she's uh, restoring 20% of her HP. So her 1 has a, has a hefty chance to proc cooldown reduction. Her 2 has a hefty chance to proc cooldown reduction. And then she has a 50% chance when hit to proc it. So she's... Pretty much healing battery for herself. This on a three turn cooldown. Once you get this skilled all the way, it goes to 320% with a 100% chance to decrease skill 3's cooldown. So pretty much it's an instant 20% heal. And actually, I think this hits three times, so this might actually, it might be four times. So it's pretty much a guaranteed self heal for about 80%, 60%, whichever one it is. That's pretty strong. And then her ultimate. It's another single target. She's all single target hero. Inflicts damage equal to 300% of attack. Five turn cooldown, so not that long. And you get it eventually to 480%. Now, it's on a short cooldown, so you'll see that's a lot, especially if she's a focus unit in PvP or in PvE, depending on how you're using her. This goes to 480, but um, this will go to 320 and probably, with your use of kick, be on like a two turn cooldown, most likely. If she's getting focused as well. So overall, a really strong unit. Uh, she doesn't have penetration, although you could probably talent into that. The proc chance. Doesn't have ignore defense, but quite honestly, she's one of the very few heroes in the game that can counter water heroes hard. Like Tayo, if you manage to get your ruby hitting really hard, you can take Tayo out before his, uh, his damage reduction procs at 50%. Hopefully, 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 hopefully. But the other cool thing about her is... Oh, I guess I glossed over this, my bad. Okay, so her basic passive here. This is easy to misread. 80% chance to remove defense and attack buffs at the start of the turn. Now, you might think, you know, attack increase buffs, defeat, defense increase buffs. No. Uh, attack types, like she's an attack type right up here. And defense types. So any tanks, like Ian, etc. on any attacks, like Kane. So it's pretty strong, actually, because it's all buffs. So you basically remove all their buffs. You can remove shields, you can remove damage immunities, you can remove etc, etc. So that's pretty strong. Right there. And if you happen to get this hero, I, I, I was talking to a person a couple of weeks ago that for their starter, because they just started playing the game, they got Ruby and they got Rue. And Rue's removing, like, shields all the time, so that's pretty pretty awesome. So Ruby's top tier, in my opinion, especially uh, as a banner unit. Probably, arguably the best win DPS hero. Uh, you can go Kali on that, but 
Callie's got other tricks and stuff that she uses, but as far as attack goes, Ruby's definitely best wind attack out there, because Callie's a hybrid. Callie just has a bunch of tricks to amp her damage. So now we get to the lovable church boy Kane. Good guy Kane here. Ignore this. That actually says church boy Kane. No, I'm kidding. It says wild warrior Kane. <laughs> Alright, so. Kane was an enigma when the game first came out. He was actually one of the stronger PvP units in the game. An increased light dog allies multi strike chance by 20 percent chance that's actually pretty good you should use him on uh if you're running heavy light teams on world boss on those days where you can use all heroes or dark team because for the dark boss you should use him as the leader just for the multi-strike because multi-strike more chances to proc more chances for etc crits anyway so on his one untamed nature 30 percent chance to awaken untamed nature to increase multi-strike and counter attack chance by 80 percent for two turns when the enemy recovers HP, so pretty much whenever there's an HP recovery thing that goes off, he has a chance to put up this untamed nature, increasing his own multi and counter attack chance by 80%. Pretty strong. So untamed nature increases attack by 10% for two turns, stacks up to five times. So if you're fighting a team that's like super heal heavy, Kane's actually pretty strong on that, even in PvE encounters. Because uh, the dude's constantly giving himself this increased damage, you know, multi strike counter, and then increased attack percentage. That can be pretty good. Now it is two. Or excuse me, let me. I totally skipped over the other passive. So Berserk Rage, once you get a 60 passive, inflicts 50% additional damage when attacking support enemies. That's actually very strong. Uh, when Untamed Nature is awakened, has a 100% chance to absorb damage for one turn and a 100% chance to increase the target's recovery amount by 100%. Okay, so there's a lot of things that's easy to misconstrue this. This up top is by itself, just happens automatically, inflicts additional damage, 50% additional damage on supports. Stop. You know, that's done right there. When Untamed Nature is awakened, has a 100% chance to absorb damage for a turn. So Kane will basically put up his own personal able shield, which is you hit him, he absorbs all the damage, even penetration damage, and there's really nothing you can do about it. Uh, well, there's stuff you can do about it, but most characters can't do anything about it. And 100% chance to decrease the attacker's recovery amount by 100% for two turns. Essentially, you stop healing on that target as long as that debuff is up. That's what that is. So, on his one, inflict damage equal to 100%, 35% chance to decrease target's recovery amount. As you scale this up, it'll eventually go to 160 and 60. And the decreased recovery amount is on a two-turn cooldown. Or, uh, duration, rather. Dark Beast on his two. Pretty good skill. Inflicts damage equal to 110% of attack. The three targets, 35% chance to decrease the target's recovery amount by 100% for two turns. So pretty much... Another, uh, anti-healing measure. Pretty much the majority of the stuff he does is anti-healing. So, actually can hard counter someone, even like a Ruby. Because Ruby so much uh, cooldown reduction heals her, but if this debuff is on her, it won't heal her. So uh, this way, eventually, when you scaled up, go to 176% chance to attack three targets, 60% chance for the uh, anti recovery debuff, and then on his alt, it's penetration damage, heavy hitting, six turn cooldown, starts at 300%, eventually goes to 480%. Pretty good ultimate. So Kane, his hard counters, Ruby's his hardest counter, but also anyone that can put on Melancholy or Dispel debuffs, or excuse me, buffs rather. So uh, Cynthia, Edwin, Edwin do it? Yeah, Edwin can do it to attack characters. I know there's like one other character that puts on Melancholy, but I forget. It's like actually in the meta. But anyways, Kane's actually not bad, but he's more of a PvP hero. Not that useful in PvE, unless he's a bonus unit. And very rarely is he useful in PvE if there's like a heavy healing encounter. So, pretty good unit. I wouldn't call him top tier anymore, but he's definitely one of the better units in the game. So your top tier units on this banner, Karen, Ruby. Kane's about a step behind, and Mary, just about right there with him. Although Mary can be a little more useful in PvE as well as PvP, depending on who you're running with, but she needs heavy curse synergy or heavy 
unable to be revived synergy. So. Uh, potential counters for all these heroes. I like to throw that in, in case there's people that are having issues with some of these heroes. Uh, your hardest counter for Ruby is going to be probably Morgan, honestly. Or anyone fire. Or anyone that puts up anti-recovery. So. But Ruby can still do competitive against them. It's just, you know, they're dealing bonus damage on her. Kane, your hardest counter to Kane is going to be Ruby, like I mentioned. Also Cynthia, Edwin, anyone with Melancholy. Mary, your hardest counter is going to be almost every freaking light DPS in the game. Because light's super powerful right now. But Saya, uh, Esmeralda, who else? Um, Christian. Anyone that nukes really hard as a light DPS is going to be hard counter Mary. Although, honestly, to be perfectly honest, almost anybody that hard nukes is going to be a counter to Mary. Unfortunately for her. And then Karen. Uh, your hard counters against Karen. Someone like Kane. Because Kane actually hits supports 50% harder. Uh, otherwise, Ruby. Ruby will hit her pretty hard. Any wind hero. And Karen's actually fairly squishy. Uh... So I recommend if you get her gear with some either, uh, actually Cynthia actually hits her pretty hard too. Gear with some either defense or some HP, because there's a lot more ignore armor going into the game right now. And once again, the bonuses have been changed for those who didn't catch in the preview video. There's no more rainbows. I don't know how to feel about that, but there are more Evomon now. There's lots of Evomon. You could see and they also added this extra thing now to where you summon 10 times you get the ssr ticket you can summon 15 times and it's a repeat reward so every time you summon five times after you summon the initial 10 times you get this reward it's uh three five star evilmon four ten star evilmon and another hero selector ticket the hero selector tickets are any hero on the banner so now it's going to be easier for uh whales to get or people that are just wanting to spend the money to get uh, max skills on all these characters. So uh, that's a shrewd move by Netmarble slash Mobirum there. But yeah, no. They got to make money, right? Yeah. Anyways, guys, this has been your banner review for the banner this week. Karen, Ruby, Kane, Mary. I am Showtime DR. You found my YouTube. Please subscribe if you are so inclined. You like this video. Uh, I'm also on Twitch, Showtime DR, twitch.tv. You can watch me there. I usually stream PST in the evening, afternoon times. Uh, so very Asian-friendly streamer in the Asian nations. It's usually morning. If you're working, then you're working, then that's that. But otherwise, come check me out. I uh, also got a link to my Discord in the notes. So if you feel like coming in, asking some questions, sharing your experiences, what have you. We got some pretty good discussions going on there so having a good time and i just like to say uh so previously i had not been streaming or not streaming uh making videos for data leaked information because i got some information that basically said that if for whatever reason the company doesn't like you or there's some type of weird complaint or whatever you can actually get banned on youtube for that i guess that happened to certain people with certain games but then i'm seeing other people posting the stuff and their channels are just fine so i guess in the future i'm actually going to start producing that content more for you guys probably not the immediate future but within within a week for sure so be looking forward to that i'll get more into what's coming what to gear up for, etc. But... Alright guys, so have a good day. If you want one of these heroes, good luck. I'll be pulling... I finished the Morgan banner because that one just came out. By the way guys, these are, these are both on 7 day cooldowns. So that's kind of unusual that a new banner is on the same cooldown. Which means probably next week is going to be the first week for the new heroes with the new advent. Because there's a fire advent coming. And then... There's a hard counter to Rue coming. So that'll be kind of interesting. Hopefully pretty soon they'll get a hard counter for Eamon. Because Eamon really needs one really badly. But again, a hard counter to Rue. I'm cool with that. Because Rue's very strong in the game. And yeah, so that's my rambling for now. So Peace out, guys. Good luck on your uh, farming this week. There's double Evo. So go take full advantage of that. Definitely reset those dungeons. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.